Here's your KNDY updated weatherology forecast for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Slight chance of thunderstorms today. Otherwise, cloudy skies with a few peaks of sun. Daytime highs approaching 81. Winds out of the south, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Get up-to-the-minute weather updates from the Weatherology Weather Center. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on KNDY for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. Right now, 59. Kansas Mid-America Network News. I'm Andy Hoosier with a potential special session in the state legislature looming for tax bills after Governor Laura Kelly still deciding on whether she will sign or veto the latest tax plan that was passed up by the legislature. Republican Kansas State Senator Dennis Pyle has been one of those siding with the governor in not overriding those vetoes as he talks about some of the tax plans and what he'd like to see in order to get his support. But I want the standard deduction. I want at least a 25 percent for married, 30 for a single head of household. Uh, increased because the working families and the working people of Kansas use the standard deduction, and I want to see tax relief focused toward that. I also want to see uh, the uh, property tax relief that we put into Senate Bill 377. And uh, so far, none of those three components have been put into any one single tax bill. The Kansas State Senate was one vote shy in overriding the governor's veto on multiple tax bills, as he says that he'd like to see additional reforms. Fox Kansas News at 9. Join the award-winning Fox Kansas News team. The first on the air with world, state, and local news from the Wichita area you can trust. Get the first forecast of the night with accurate information to help you prepare for the day tomorrow. And stay up to date with the first sports scores from throughout the day for your favorite teams. Get all the news you need in a concise half hour at a convenient time. Fox Kansas News at 9. Your news, your time. Channel 24, Cox Cable Channel 4. This is a special message from Burwell Roofing and Construction. The spring storm season has already started, and if it's already affected your home, call Burwell Roofing and Construction at 316-794-3430. Their team will assess the damage to your roof, siding, and guttering, give you an honest and fair estimate for repairs, and work with your insurance company along the way. 316-794-3430. 316-794-3430. Don't wait. Call Burwell Roofing and Construction today. 316-794-3430. And at BurwellConstruction.com. A new study from the American Library Association has released a statement showing the number of books that were banned across the state of Kansas over the past year in public schools. As KSNT News reports, the organization has released their information through the Office for Intellectual Freedom that details what books were experiencing the most challenges and suppression or censorship in the year. As according to Raymond Garcia, the spokesperson for the ALA, they say most censorship attempts to go unreported. A challenge may result in access to a title being retained, restricted, or revoked at the institution where it was challenged. As they say, overall in the state of Kansas, a total of 26 attempts were made to restrict access to books in the state of Kansas, with 63 book titles being challenged during those attempts. Some of the major ones included the book, quote, I Am Jazz, another one known as Red, White, and Royal Blue, among others, received some of the most challenges, including the ones known as Gender Queer, a memoir, and All Boys Aren't Blue. Kansas Mid-American Network News, I'm Andy Hoosier. Most hailstorms last three to five minutes. In that time, Mother Nature can deal a crushing blow to your crops, your profits, and the future of your farming operation. Remove that risk with crop hail coverage from Blue Valley Insurance. Our crop hail policies provide protection against physical damage from hail, and our wind coverage ensures a safety net in case of damaging winds and tornadoes. Blue Valley Insurance in Lynn, Greenleaf, Hanover, and Marysville. Nebraska Mid-America Network News, I am Felix Johnson. Richard and Mildred Hoffman met 77 years ago at a baseball game in Donovan. Richard came home from the Navy and did what kids do during that time, go to the farmer's irrigation well and have a water fight. That same day, he met Mildred. The couple has now celebrated 75 years of marriage and were honored with the key to the city by Mayor Roger Steele of Grand Island. The couple spoke with KSB Local 4. We both believe in God. One thing we didn't do when we first got married, I said that we will have no argument in our family and we'll all get along. 
In other news, according to preliminary data from the Nebraska Department of Labor, Nebraska's unemployment rate has remained steady for the past eight months, coming in at 2.5% in April. That compares to the 3.9% for the nation. Nebraska Mid-American Network News. Attention Pony Express cat backers, this is Wyatt Thompson. The cats are coming to Marysville at Landall Lanes at 2005 Center Street from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 on Thursday, May 23rd. Our program features Jerome Tang, football offensive coordinator Connor Riley, student athletes, new alumni association president Adam Walker, Willie the Wildcat, and the K-State cheer team. The event is free and complimentary hot dogs and chips will be provided. Call 785-562-2186 for more information. See you May 23rd in Marysville. Go Cats! Reporting local news, I'm Bruce Steerking. Marshall County Commissioners met last week with the Emergency Management Director to discuss man hours and costs associated with the Big Blue River fire this spring. Several area and out-of-area agencies responded and spent significant time helping with the fire. Commissioners expressed concern some of the districts may have expended the majority of their budgets. A motion was passed reimbursing 50% of wages for Blue Rapids and Frankfurt rural fire districts with funding from the Risk Management Fund. Washington County Commissioners discussed warning sirens at last week's meeting. After receiving a report, the unit in Palmer was not operating, and Hollenberg is also without. It was noted these were responsibility of each city. The Palmer mayor indicated the council had taken the matter up, noting the current unit was beyond repair, they are considering a replacement. Nemahal County Commissioners received wording proposed for the November ballot regarding extension of the health care sales tax in Nemahal County. Gage County Board of Supervisors recently approved renewal of a four-year agreement with the City of Beatrice to provide emergency communication services and dispatch. And a three-year funding agreement was renewed with Engage up to $150,000 annually toward economic development. Renewal of EMS agreements with several units was tabled pending a closer look at terms in anticipation of the county's annual fiscal year coming up in June. A pilot program that seeks to make home ownership more affordable is available for a limited time in Marshall County. Designed to be a catalyst for first-time home buyers, benefit employers in recruiting and retention, and attract alumni back to the area to work, start, or purchase a business or retire, Eligible homes include existing ones, existing homes with planned or financed upgrades totaling $50,000 or greater, manufactured homes including lot and infrastructure, or new construction. Available on a first-come, first-served basis for a limited time until funds run out or the program ends December 31st. Get started with your local bank or go online to ncrpc.org slash homeownership. Local banks and foundations are participating in providing funding for the program. The program was among topics discussed with the Marshall County Partnership for Growth Director Jerry Zayas this past weekend on our public affairs program on KNDY. Zayas also outlined goals for the countywide public-private partnership. Housing, child care, and small business development are a key areas of concentration. And then we started adding on what we call community vitality, helping uh, local cities in different ways, especially with these small small grants that are being offered by other um, agencies. Dale E. Feldhausen, age 75, of Manhattan, passed away Wednesday. Funeral service Tuesday, 1030 at the Sedalia Community Church burial in the Sedalia Cemetery. Family will receive friends Monday from 6 until 7 p.m. at the Anders Fifley Funeral Home in charge of arrangements for Dale Feldhausen. Florence Minnie Bloom, age 104, of Beatrice, passed away Thursday. Funeral service Tuesday, 1030 at the Bethlehem Lutheran Church, Rural Bremen, <clears throat> German the Church Cemetery. Harmon Wright, mortuary of Beatrice, in charge of arrangements for Florence Bloom. On the Marshall County Senior Citizens Lunch Menu today, ribs, potato wedges, sliced carrots and sauerkraut, and peaches. Tomorrow, cavatini, French bread, green beans, and mandarin oranges. Key and Dewa News Time is 7.13. Agriculture. Our country was built on it. Our children are fed by it. 
No one quite understands the unique needs of the farmer like United Bank and Trust. Whether you raise crops or livestock, you need the right equipment at the right time. Our ag loans can help you acquire and maintain that equipment when and where you need it. Contact one of our experienced ag lenders today. United Bank and Trust. Banking for your way of life. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Big Blue River Days on the bricks in downtown Marysville, Friday, May 31st, and Saturday, June 1st. The fun begins Friday with the Main Street Cruise, 5 until 8, the Beer Mile Blind Draw Cornhole, and live bands with Live Circuit at 6, and the Mikey Needleman Band is back at 9. Saturday Car Show Registration runs 8 until noon, the show from noon to 2. Kids Zone Games and Inflatables from 10 to 4 Saturday, Cornhole Journey and Taste of Barbecue at 2 with the Big Blue Parade at 2.30, and the Stolen Winnebago's live at 9. Full details online at BigBlueRiverDays.com. Ease the burden on your loved ones with pre-planning services offered through Christy Anders Funeral Home in Waterville and Anders Fifeley Funeral Home in Riley. This is Jared Anders, and we can help you in assuring that your wishes will be taken care of, easing the decision process for your family. From service arrangements to special requests, let us take time to meet your exact needs. Find us online at apfunerals.com or visit us at Christy Anders Funeral Home in Waterville or at Anders Fifely Funeral Home in Riley. Here's your KNDY weatherology forecast for northeast Kansas and southeast Nebraska. A slight chance for some rain showers and thunderstorms today, otherwise partly sunny with our highs in the mid-70s and lower 80s. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible tonight, partly cloudy with our lows in the upper 50s and mid-60s. Showers may continue into Tuesday, otherwise sunny with our highs in the upper 60s and lower 80s. Southwest winds between 10 and 20 and gusting as high as 30. Then showers may continue into Tuesday night, partly cloudy with our lows in the upper 40s and lower 50s. Northwest winds between 5 and 15 and gusting as high as 30. Still a slight chance for some rain early Wednesday morning, then sunny with our highs in the lower to mid 70s. Then mostly clear skies throughout Wednesday night with our lows in the upper 40s and lower 50s. Staying sunny and a bit warmer as we head into Thursday with our highs in the upper 70s and lower 80s. And another chance for some scattered showers throughout Thursday night, partly cloudy with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Rain may continue into Friday, otherwise sunny with our highs in the upper 70s and lower 80s. I'm meteorologist Kara Foster. Average high temperature late May 77, record high this date 95. The average low 56, the record low 30. Sunset this evening 838, sunrise in the morning at 610. We had just a few hundredths of an inch our rain gauge last evening despite the thunder and lightning. And 60 this hour with sunshine. That's a check of the morning news and weather for this Monday, the 20th of May. King Eddie News Newstime, 716. I'm Bruce Dierking reporting. Hi, this is Crystal with Sunflower Medical Clinic. I want to invite you and your child to participate in free sports physical Saturday on June 8th and June 15th from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Please call us at 785-619-6078 and schedule your appointment today. We are located just off Broadway in downtown Marysville. From ABC Sports, this is Rich Cantu. There will be a new NBA champion this year. The Wolves win game six. They win game seven. And to the huge throng of Timberwolves fans behind their bench, what a win for the Wolves on the road in Game 7. The final call on KFAN. The Wolves rallied from down as many as 20 points in the second half. They advanced to their first conference final in 20 years, beating the Nuggets 98-90 in Denver. Wolves guard Anthony Edwards on the win. I mean, it showed us who we who we are because the coaches believed in us. Um, even though at halftime, even in the third, we was down 20. They like, just keep making runs, keep making runs. And it showed us who we are, man. Once we really lock in on the defensive end, because offensively we played okay. But once we really lock in on the defensive end, man, we, we're a hell of a team to beat. The T-Wolves will host the Mavericks in game one of the Western Finals on Wednesday. Earlier Sunday, the healthy Pacers pounced on the banged-up Knicks at Madison Square Garden, winning 130-109 to to advance to the Eastern Finals, where they'll play the Celtics. You know, it's no fluke. We, we, we expect this from our group. Pacers guard Tyrese Halliburton. We knew that we could really take off, so um, it doesn't really matter what anybody thinks except for the people in our travel party, 70, 80 people who come 
because I don't think anybody here picked the Pacers to win the series. Game one in Boston on Tuesday. At the PGA Championship, Xander Shoffley captured his first major championship. ABC's Will Clark was there. A six-foot putt on 18 sealed Xander Shoffley's first major and also clinched a record, the lowest four-round score carded in a major. Just so much relief when it lipped in. I don't even really remember it lipping in. I just heard, heard everyone roaring, and I just look up to the sky in relief. Shoffley finishing the weekend 21 under Bryson DeChambeau. 20. Sunday night baseball, the Padres batter the Braves 9-1. This is Rich Cantor, ABC Sports. Everyone on the road is trying to make it to their destination safely. You can help by staying aware of the large trucks and buses around you. They take longer to stop, have large blind spots, and make wide turns that require caution from other drivers. It takes all of us working together to share the road safely. Learn more at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. Paid for by FMCSA. With Wendy's new $3 English muffin deal, you can get your choice of a sausage or bacon, egg, and cheese English muffin with small seasoned potatoes. And with all that for just three bucks, it really is a proper breakfast, wouldn't you say? Huh? With a light and fluffy toasted English muffin and crispy seasoned potatoes. Go on, Catherine, give it a go. Okay. Jolly good morning. Ah, close love. Grab a proper breakfast with Wendy's new $3 English muffin deal for a limited time. U.S. price and participation may vary. Select or request English muffin deal to obtain discount. Not valid for all card or combo orders. Single item at regular price. Prices are higher in Alaska and Hawaii. Along with the new 2024 Chevy Silverado pickups, both 1500 and 2500 models, the Nordis Motor Company in Marysville has a pair of 2024 Chevy Equinox, the RS and LT packages, and a 2024 Chevy Blazer Premier. See you today in Test Drive at the Nordis Motor Company in Marysville. From ABC News, Wall Street now. Stock futures ticked higher overnight after the Dow closed above the key 40,000 level for the first time ever on Friday. The S&P rose a tenth of a percent to close near a record of its own. The Nasdaq on Friday slipped a fraction. Rules meant to keep the country's biggest banks from failing may be changing. The Wall Street Journal says lobbying by J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs apparently changed the minds of regulators who had proposed a hike in the amount of money that banks have to keep on hand. A two-year hiatus prompted by a test failure finally ended yesterday when Blue Origin's rocket carried paying passengers to the edge of space. Among the customers was 90-year-old Ed Dwight, a retired U.S. Air Force captain selected by President Kennedy in 1961 to be the nation's first black astronaut candidate. Cooler to look at, but maybe easier to lose. Published reports say Apple is working on a slimmer version of the iPhone that likely will be launched next year. Jim Ryan, ABC News. Always happy with your five-star customer service. Your staff was super friendly and easy to work with. Quick, helpful, responsive. Thank you. I'm so happy to be a Blue Valley customer. Blue Valley is awesome. Blue Valley employees are always helpful, kind, and efficient. At Blue Valley Technologies, we appreciate all our customers. Thank you for entrusting us to keep you connected. Third Road Ag Sales have concept by AgriTech. Innovative technology and proven products improve soil health, increase yields, and allow greater return on your investments. See the difference for yourself with a call today to Third Road Ag. Hey producers, remember they offer American Family Net Wrap and can fill your needs today. Check out Third Road Ag Sales on Facebook. Good Monday morning. I'm your farm broadcaster, Sam Speck, with your latest agricultural news here on the Mid-America Ag Network. The Wheat Quality Council's Hard Winter Wheat Tour wrapped up last week after three days of scouting 449 fields in Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. GreatAmericanCrop.com says the total weighted average yield for hard winter wheat was an estimated 46.5 bushel per acre. That's over a 50% increase from 2023. Last year's tour estimate was an even 30 bushels per acre. The official tour projection for total wheat production to get harvested in Kansas is 290.4 million bushels. The number is average of estimated predictions from tour participants who gathered the information 
elevation. Based on May 1st conditions, NAS predicted the crop to be slightly lower at 267.9 million bushels with a yield of 38 bushels per acre. Many of those fields are still two to four weeks from harvest, so KansasWheat.com says a lot can happen between now and then to affect the yield. Now, in other news, we had a chance to catch up with USDA Chief Meteorologist Mark Bruskberg as he discussed how significant rains in southern Brazil are projected to impact the region's soybean crop. About three quarters of the soybean crop in the state of Rio Grande do Sul, where the heavy rain fell, about three quarters of that crop was in the bin. So we had to take a look at what was left, where the heaviest rain fell, and do our best to try to estimate how much was damaged. We came up with an initial estimate of about a million tons just from that state alone. So we're expecting about a million tons of that to be lost. We're getting reports that it's not going to be total losses, but also loss in quality. Anecdotally, we're getting estimates of losses ranging from sprouting of unharvested crops in the field to actual damage in storage facilities where crops that had already been harvested may have suffered some losses. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. I'm Shelby Varner. The Kansas Farm Management Association at K-State has put together the financial summary of KFMA Kansas Farms for 2023. Mark Dykeman, Executive Director of KFMA, provides an overview of Kansas Farms' financial situation for last year. The story of the year was really the continued drought. Drought had a, a very significant impact in 2022 and continued and, and really expanded across the state in 2023. With reduced yields and um, depressed prices in 2023, net farm income was about 98000 Our um, value of farm production, which is our measure of gross revenue, uh, was about 831,000 uh, average over 823 farms. That was down um, almost $65,000 from the year before. And what's kind of interesting in that, the livestock share of that, in, in particular beef, uh, beef cattle production, backgrounding, feeding, that had a, um, a very large impact on that, that value of farm production. Dykeman explains how interest rates impacted Kansas farms. Our effective interest rate, we calculate um, based on the average interest paid over all 823 farms that, that are in the summary, divided by their average total debt for the year. That equals to um, about 4.3%, which is a, a little bit surprising that, that it's not a little higher, but um, it's, it's a, a, a fairly significant increase um, from the year before. Government payments were important to farms' finances, and Dykeman shares how much. Net crop insurance proceeds was about $82,500 of that $98,000. When we consider government payments as well, total government payments between crop and livestock payments was about $33,800. So Crop insurance proceeds or the net crop insurance accounted for about 84% of our net farm income. And when we look at that net crop insurance and government payments, it's about 100, and almost 119% of our net farm income. So very low, we, we would, would have been negative in net farm income without um, crop insurance and government payments. That was Executive Director of the Kansas Farm Management Association, Mark Dykeman, with how Kansas Farms financially did in 2023. Read more on this topic by going to www.agmanager.info backslash KFMA. I'm Shelby Varner, and this has been Agriculture Today over the K-State Radio Network. Good morning, Dennis Hendricks, Beatra 77 Livestock. It's a Monday on May 20th. Hey, a great day to all. Certainly hope you got a little bit of rain. Uh, we were on the short end, but uh, hey, we'll look for the next one. Well, the sale today starts at 10 o'clock here this morning. Certainly a nice sale as we uh, round up the schedule and go into Memorial Day weekend next week, uh, being closed in honor of Memorial Day. 
and then we start our rotations of uh, summer schedule. We will be back on June 3rd on a Monday. Well, here today, the great news is the cattle markets last week were certainly higher with 190 in the cash, 298 to $300 in the carcass. So that is very good news on last week's markets. At 12 o'clock noon here today, we certainly will get into the hay department. 65 Prairie, 140 Brome in the square bales. In the round bales, there is alfalfa 20, third cut of weights of 1656, 1720. There's two groups of round alfalfa 20 and 20, third cut. There's also a third and fourth cut mix with the weight of 1738, fifth cut alfalfa of 1902. In the Prairie Department, 10 bales, 1490, 10 bales, 1652, also 14 bales of brome at 1441. In the round brome, there is groups of 11 and 20, round rye 11. In the round grass, there's 12, 20, and a 6 that have a weight of 1,500. Hay Department, that all starts at 12 o'clock noon. At about 12.40, we'll be back on the inside, and we do have uh, baby calves here today. There's two black heifer bottle calves. They're going to be four weeks and six weeks old. Another group of black bull and heifer bottle calves at 45 days old. In the families, folks, we've got a nice set of 12 black families. The Tiberti families are coming out of Lincoln. couple first calf, there's two, I believe, three-year-olds. The balance are going to be four, five, and six. Tremendously good black march on to May. Black calves come out and check them out. They should sell right there at about 1245 here after dinner. In the bread cow department, Daryl Summerholder out of uh, Auburn's got 14 black. Bread cows are going to be running age. They're certainly uh, what is the uh, late calvers to fit into this tight group here today. They're going to be bred black or semangus. Summer calvers, we will pull a prig in a mouth. In addition, there's three black families, broken mouth, three-week-old black calves that uh, will sell here today also. And the feeder cattle, it's going to start off with the Bartles calves out of Marysville. Eleven black steer and heifers, they got a wean and back. They're going to be 350 to 475. Seven black heifers out of Adams, wean back. They're going to be four to 600. Brugman out of Douglas has got a set of cattle. Eighteen black, black baldy steer and heifers, weaned. Back five to six hundred and fifty. Stelly got a crate, got a set of calves coming off the calves. They're going to be sixteen black steer and heifers. They do have a February vac. They're going to weigh six to six fifty. Maddox out of Baileyville's got ten black black baldy steer and heifers, five to six hundred. Dave Niemeyer out of Beatrice, twenty four black baldy Hereford steer and heifers. Four to eight hundred. Corblick out of Fairmont's got twenty seven black, black baldy steer and heifers. Nice set of cattle, folks. Forty day wean, they've got a vaccination of five fifty to six seventy five. Keller out of Crete's got a handful, six black, black baldy steer and heifers, five fifty to seven hundred. And Losey's out of Odell. Eight black, black baldy steers are gonna be seven to seven seventy five. Nice calves here today. On the last sale before we start the uh, summer rotation. So certainly give us a call, Tanya Rick or Denny at 223-3571. Again, reiterating that we will be closed Memorial Day Monday, May 27th. And we will be back June 3rd on the start of the summer schedule. Certainly go to the home page, check out schedule and door. On the bottom of the consignment page is full listing, and you can certainly check us out. Well, with that, we say have a great day. Keep in mind, you certainly can go online for all the markets, consignments, hay sales, the auctioneers, or turn on the video at Beatra 77 net. 7.32 from King of DY, 60 with sunshine. A lot of thunder and lightning last night. Uh, out of it all, we scattered just a few hundredths of an inch here at studios in Marysville. Heavier amounts as you headed further south. And it's some rough weather out in central Kansas. Uh, several tornado touchdowns, etc.
gusty winds creating some havoc out the central part of the state as the activity tracked west east. Again, we settled in for just a couple hundredths of an inch. Highs around 80 most all of this week ahead. Ancient mythologies had a lot to say about the origin of lightning and thunder. A closer look today on the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. Remember in the beginning, when you first started to build a life for you and your family, you never imagined it would come to this. Instead of living your dreams, you're living with debt. In fact, it's smothering you. Now there's a way you can take back control with one simple call. If you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt, you qualify to receive a free, no-obligation consultation on how to get rid of that debt for good. Call the Debt Helpline now. We work on your behalf to reduce your debt. We specialize in credit cards, retail store cards, and medical bills. One simple call is all it takes to get the ball rolling to a debt-free life. Stop living with debt and start living your dreams. Call the Debt Helpline now. 800-957-6063. That's 800-957-6063. With more practical tips and useful advice, this is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report for Monday, May 20th, the 141st day of the year. Entertainer Cher celebrates a birthday, and Charles Lindbergh began the first nonstop solo flight across the Atlantic on this day in 1927. During the next springtime thunderstorm, take a moment to reflect on the ancient mythologies explaining lightning and thunder. The most well-known comes from the Norse mythology. Thor, the god of thunder, was said to ride his chariot through the heavens wielding a magic hammer. Lightning and thunder were Thor's hammer being used against his foes. They probably knew that there was a more practical explanation, like opposing electrical charges and atmospheric particles, but what's the fun in that? Thunderstorms inspire awe and wonder, and the ancients had epic imaginations. That is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. Find more fascinating weather facts at almanac.com. Kansas Mid-American Network Sports, I'm Andy Hoosier. The Kansas City Royals have one more home series before heading back on the road as they start off again with another three-game series against the Detroit Tigers with first pitch tonight at 640. The Royals did wrap up their three-game series yesterday against the Athletics at home at Kauffman Stadium before they get ready for this one as they are still battling for that number two slot in the American League Central, just one game behind the Cleveland Guardians sitting 26-19. and The Guardians are at 27 and 17 for their overall season. After the Tigers, they head back on the road as they head out to Tampa Bay to take on the Rays for three games before heading out to Minnesota against the Twins for a four-game series before returning back again to Kauffman Stadium. Also going into the end of the week is state championships for high school baseball across the state of Kansas with the brackets officially being made and games starting on Thursday and Friday this week. Kansas Mid-American Network Sports, I'm Andy Hoosier. 